This morning on Wake Up With Hope, we will be featuring stories on how Hope Channel is changing lives around the world, a devotional thought with Pastor Mark Finley, and a brief talk on unpleasant revelations. Stay with us. And welcome to Wake Up With Hope on a Friday. We can't wait to get started with today's program. That's right. You know, it's a lovely morning and we are so glad you chose to start your weekend with the love of Jesus. And not only is it a Friday morning, but tomorrow is also International Men's Day. So we want to take a moment to appreciate all the men in our world and the con contributions that they make as fathers, husbands, sons, brothers, and so much more. Men, we appreciate you and honey I appreciate you and I love you so much <laughs> uh, thank you love you know and I'm thankful God made men after all what would the world be without us <laughs> so true <laughs> <laughs> well friends we have a program filled with blessings so let's get right to it let's begin by taking a look back at this day in history at exactly noon on this day in 1883, American and Canadian railroads began using four continental time zones to end the confusion of dealing with thousands of local times. The bold move was emblematic of the power shared by the railroad companies. What power to change time? And yet, we are reminded of the one who truly has the power to really change time. Hmm. Do you remember the story in Joshua chapter 12 when Joshua was leading a battle and he needed just a little bit more time to win the battle, but the sun was going down. What would God do? Well, he stopped the sun in its tracks. The sun couldn't move. It couldn't go down. God kept the sun shining until the people of God won the battle. Wow, what an amazing story that God truly wants His children to succeed. You know, God wants the very best for you and for me. God is willing to go to the heights of heaven and the depths of the sea, whatever it takes, so that He will save us, so that we can realize His incredible love for us. Friends, would you accept His love for you today? Amen, I want to do just that. Well, we all experience it. It usually causes us to do and say mm. things that we later regret. It's called anger. But what does anger reveal about what we care about and are passionate about? Well, Adrian Webster is here to help us navigate this very issue. are interesting, aren't they? You watch them play together and you realize they're so real with their emotions, so open about them. One minute they're fighting like cats and dogs, and the next minute all is forgiven and they're enjoying each other's company again. But you know what, as we grow up from being kids, that feeling of anger doesn't just go away. In fact, as adults, we tend to become more attuned to it. We handle it in different ways and it seems to last longer, doesn't just dissipate so quickly. We find it harder to forgive. It's that sense of displeasure when something that you love is being threatened or taken away or is endangered. That motivation emotionally to reach out and to protect, to make right what is wrong, to seek justice in the case of injustice. We can't get away from it because anger is something that's activated by what we love when that something we love is being threatened. So what if anger is really a revelation into the soul, a window into the soul? What if anger was a way we could actually get to know ourselves better if we would stop, observe, and listen? Instead of trying to ignore it, instead of trying to make like it shouldn't happen, instead of trying to stop it from happening, what if we were to stop, observe, and listen? Go back in your mind to a moment in time where you feel or felt that feeling. And then ask yourself, what was going on? What would make things right? What are you living for in that moment? What is most precious to you? 
what is it that you really love? See, anger is an interesting experience. It's not something to shy away from. It's something to pay attention to. Scripture says, be angry, but do not sin. It never says, never get angry, or that the emotion of anger in and of itself is wrong or sinful. Why is that? I think it's because it's God-given. It is in fact the way in which the Lord Himself has enabled us to be moved and motivated sufficiently to make wrongs right. We are motivated emotionally to stand up and make a difference in the case where something has gone wrong, someone is being hurt, something that we really love and cherish is being threatened. I want to suggest that perhaps the solution to the anger problem is not that we simply ignore it or just hope that it'll go away. The solution to the anger problem is a reorienting of the heart, a rewiring of the love compass. You see, if we loved differently, if we had different priorities, then the things that we got angry about would change or shift as well. So when you're feeling the, the, the emotion of anger, ask yourself, what am I living for in this moment? What do I really love in this moment? What do I really want more than anything else right now? Anger is an unpleasant emotion, but it's also a revelation. So what does anger reveal about the orientation of your love compass? See, I believe that you can solve the anger problem simply by learning to love differently. Scripture says something profound about God. It says, God is love. So perhaps the solution to our anger problem is that we need to learn to love the way God loves to love what He loves, the priorities that He prioritizes, the connections that are valuable to Him. Perhaps as we learn to love as God loves, we'll find that our anger experience is transformed. The things that used to make us angry just that, well, we don't get angry about that stuff anymore because it's no longer that valuable to us. And yet we find new anger developing over things that really are worthy of getting angry about. So. My simple question to you today is, do you love what God loves? Because if you don't, you're going to find that anger is a negative experience that just will not go away. You can't get a handle on it. You can't, you can't be master of it. But if you'll allow God to rewire your heart, reorient you, so that your love compass is different, you're going to find that that automatically solves your anger problem. Coming up right after a short break, Ronnie Mills will be here to share exciting Hope Channel news with us. Don't forget, if you're enjoying today's show, share it with a friend or visit our website at hopetv.org slash wakeup to see more. And you can also search for us on YouTube. Check out our channel and keep up with us right there. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. We are enjoying spending this time with you. Right now, Ronnie Mills from our very own Hope Channel is back with us today as he discusses important topics with a special guest. I can't wait to see what Ronnie has to share. Ronnie? Good morning, Saints, and happy Friday. Today I'm on the beautiful new set of one of Hope Channel's favorite programs. In fact, this is the first time that I've featured Inverse on Wake Up With Hope. I want to give a warm welcome to the host of Inverse, Pastor Justin Kim. Hey, Ronnie. Pastor Kim, welcome to Wake Up With thank Hope. Thank you, thank you, it's good to be here. <laughs> For anyone who's not familiar with Inverse, what is Inverse? Um, Inverse is a young adult uh, Bible study program. Uh, we really are trying to gear towards young adults because there's many uh, young adults who have questions about faith, about spirituality, about the Bible. And it's four of my friends, there's six of us all together. We sit around this table and uh, we are, some of us have been friends for about 20 years. We read and study the Bible together and we find ways to apply it in our lives in a very real and applicable way. In addition to this incredible new set, what new updates do you have regarding this season of Inverse? Yeah, we got a lot of cool topics up ahead. Uh, we follow the adult Bible study guide uh, curriculum for two of the quarters of the year. And then we have the inverse Bible study curriculum, which follows the young adult curriculum for the year. And uh, some, some interesting topics such as the book of Leviticus, uh, three angels' messages, 
Um, those are the things that come to my mind right now. And uh, the, I think the thing that we're most excited about is we have adopted this podcast format. We've got our earphones on. Um, we got these mics, and the lot of uh, this this young adult cohort, they listen through podcasts, and then through podcasts they can be cleaning or jogging, which gets them inspired to watch the TV show or through social media the video, um, and also this this set. I mean, it's a great, beautiful set that that we're just privileged to be on. Amen. What's one of the biggest misconceptions about Christ? Yeah, it's unfortunate that that uh, as more time passes, we are seeing that religion is looked on with suspicion, and the God that, that you and I serve is, uh, is considered, considered a vindictive and a, and a mean, angry, capricious God. And this is so far away from what Scripture is saying, that God is a merciful, loving, warm God. And because of media and other, other channels out there, uh, there's, a, there's, there's a crisscross of messages, and we want to calibrate that back to what Scripture is saying. For many people, they are facing a hell storm or financial insecurity, mm. political unrest, societal upheaval, and they just have extreme anxiety. Mm. What Bible verse would you give them this morning to bring them hope? Yeah, it's a great question. I think of Jeremiah 33, 3. The Bible says, call to me and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not know. And so this really banks on the power of God and then banks on the goodness of God. And on those two legs, whether you're a believer or not, you're calling out and you're appealing to His power and His goodness to be manifested in your life and, and the chaos of our daily lives. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Kim, for that inspiring message and all that God is doing through Inverse to bring people hope. Amen. And thank you also for tuning in today. Your support enables Hope Channel to continue to produce Wake Up With Hope as well as broadcast Inverse so that we can encourage people to not lose hope but embrace Christ. Join this impact movement today by calling 1-888-446-7388. That's 1-888-446-7388. Or donate online at hopetv.org slash donate. Again, that's hopetv.org slash donate. Thanks for your support. Thank you, Ronnie. We have to take a short break now, so stay with us. After the break, we will have today's devotional thought by Pastor Mark Finley. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope, friends. Thank you for staying with us. It's now time for our devotional thought with Pastor Mark Finley. The book of Proverbs talks a lot about integrity. When you think of integrity, what do you think about? I think about my father. You know, we are entering into the Thanksgiving season now, and Thanksgiving is a time to look back on your life. It's to reflect over the goodness of God and how God has guided you in your life. One of the things I'm incredibly thankful for is I was brought up with a fa by a father who had impeccable integrity. Let me give you an example of that. One day, Dad was walking down the street. It happened to be a Friday. And in our little town, a mill town of Norwich, Connecticut, people got paid on Friday. In those days, more than 50 years ago now, 60 years ago actually, people would get an envelope, a little white envelope, and there would be cash in the envelope. Dad was walking down the street, and as he was walking down the street, he kicked something, and it was a, some leaves. It was in the fall season, and he leaned over and he saw a little white envelope. He picked it up and it was filled with money. Now dad knew that somebody had gotten paid and dad knew that uh, that person had dropped their envelope full of money. There was no name on that particular envelope. Dad could have kept the money easily, but he was a man of integrity. He took that money to the police, turned it in, and the police ultimately found the person whose money it was. Dad had no contact with that person. Years went by. At that point, after many, many years, I was at It Is Written Television. And uh, we got a phone call at It Is Written, and they said, is Mark Finley the speaker? Yes, we've watched him on television, yes. 
And they said, does he have a father by the name of James Finley? Yes. And this person said, many, many years ago, I lost my pay. I went to the police station and they said, a man by the name of Mr. Finley, we don't know anything about him or where he lives, but Mr. Finley found it and he turned it in. And this person said, you know, if Mark Finley is his son, that man, James Finley, is such an honest man of integrity, we want to know more about faith, Christianity, and Jesus. What is integrity? Well, Proverbs chapter 10 talks about it, in, or Proverbs chapter 11 talks about it this way. We're going to start with verse 1 and we'll read verse 1, 2, and 3. Proverbs 11, 1, 2, and 3. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. Then it says, when pride comes, then comes shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgression shall destroy them. Did you notice that? It says, the integrity of the upright shall guide them. What is integrity? Integrity is honesty, but it's more than honesty. Integrity is commitment to do the right thing because it is right. Integrity has to do with strong moral principles and ethical values. As our text says, it guides us in every decision of life. It's a very interesting text. In verse 3 it says, the integrity of the upright shall guide them. What does that mean? It means that when you are a person of integrity, your inner moral compass guides you in everything you do. Daniel was a captive in a foreign land, and he would not compromise his moral principles, and God honored him. C.S. Lewis once put it this way. He said, integrity is doing the right thing even when nobody is watching. The Hebrew word for integrity means completeness. Dishonest people are not complete. They live in a state of anxiety and fear always, concerned that their dishonesty or a lack of integrity will be discovered. When you live a life of integrity, you have nothing to fear because you have nothing to hide. A person of integrity is not governed by the circumstances around them. They have this internal moral compass that guides their lives. Their one desire is to please God in every aspect of their lives. They're people of honesty, people of integrity. When I think of the Thanksgiving season, I look back over my life and I think of things to be thankful for. I'm thankful for a father who taught me integrity. I'm thankful for a father who taught me honesty. Even before I was a Christian, I had this sense of integrity you know, there are some times in your life where you come to these crossroads. The situation may appear to be very small, but you look back on it later and you say, I made the right decision. It was a decision of integrity. I worked on the golf course as a teenager growing up. Uh, and uh, by the time I was 16, 17 years old, I was out on the golf course working every day and would usually get a break for lunch about 12.30, 1 o'clock, 1.30. There was a little restaurant not far from the golf course that we went out to work on, to, to eat in from work. I went with a friend to this restaurant. This particular day it was packed, and we just sat there and ordered our sandwiches and ordered our lunch and ate lunch. And my friend elbowed me. He said, Mark, this restaurant is packed. I said, yeah, I know it's packed. He said, you know, we can just slip out the front door. We didn't even have to pay. So. I felt a little uncomfortable about it. You know, I feel uneasy about it, but I was under pressure from my friend. I didn't, at that moment, do what Daniel did and determine in his heart to serve God. I was just becoming a committed Christian. But my friend elbowed me again, come on, let's go. And I was a little embarrassed not to go, so he jumped up and just kind of just slyly walked out the door, didn't pay for his lunch. I slyly walked out the door, didn't pay for my lunch. But all that afternoon, you know, because I had this father who taught me honesty, this father who taught me integrity, I was troubled. I went back to the golf course, worked. It was 2 o'clock. I was stressed out. 3 o'clock, I was anxious. 4 o'clock, I was more stressed out. And I thought to myself, this stress is just overwhelming me. I have stolen something. I have not paid for my lunch. I've got to go back to that place. So I came back 
later in the day without my friend, of course, uh, because he was long gone after work. And I came back after I was through working on the golf course, went up to the lady and I said, ma'am, you know, I was here today. It was very, very crowded. And we left and I didn't pay. And I just want you to know that here's the money for my lunch that I didn't pay for. You know, somebody says, well, that's a small thing. You could have gotten away with it. I could have gotten away from it. But look, I couldn't have slept well that night because I knew that I would be out of harmony with God. You can sleep well when you live a life of integrity. You can sleep well when you live a life in which you don't compromise your moral values. You can sleep well when you know that you have attempted that day to treat every individual with dignity, with respect, with fairness, with honesty. And that's what Solomon is talking about in this particular proverb that we've read today. Solomon says that a man of integrity will live the life of righteousness. So go out today and face your world in the power of God, determined by the grace of God, through the strength of God, to live a life of integrity. And if you will do that, you'll have a peace in your soul and you'll have a positive reputation before others. So go, live that life of integrity and be thankful. Thank you so much, Pastor Mark, for those encouraging words. And friends, thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope. If you'd like to learn more about our program, maybe rewatch a segment during the weekend or share with a friend, please visit us at hopetv.org slash wake up. And we look forward to starting the new week with you also, so don't forget to join us on Monday. We will have an inspiring message from Voice of Prophecy, a baked sweet potato enchilada mm. recipe from Gian Olive, and the premiere of a brand new series right here on Wake Up With Hope. All right, that sounds exciting. <laughs> also, if you enjoyed today Today's devotional thought and would like to learn more about the Bible. Please visit us at hope.study to request your free Bible study guides. Again, that's hope.study. Don't put a life of abundant joy and peace on hold any longer. And friends, we don't want to leave without sharing a Bible promise for the weekend. Today's Bible promise comes from Psalms chapter 9, verse 18. It says, But God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Hmm. Do you feel your great need today, friend? Are you afflicted or in despair? Well, have courage. God is with you. In fact, He has promised to never leave you and to constantly fill you with hope. So friends, take heart. You are not alone in your struggles. Amen. God longs to make us happy, friends. We encourage you to keep this joyful promise in your heart this weekend, and we truly wish you a happy weekend as you walk with the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, today we open our hearts wide so you can fill us, fill us now, fill us with your love, fill us with your peace. Above all, fill us with hope. For we know that you're a God who cares. You love us very much. And I pray, Lord, that today we would walk very close to you. And may we rest with you this evening as we end our day. May we look back and truly see how you led us every step of the way. In Jesus' name, amen.